morning, everyone. What another peaceful morning. There's not a breath of wind. Oh, there's just a, the very slightest breath. Very, very little midges, which I'm surprised about. Um, I had a bit of broken sleep last night. I was up at two and four and stuff, so I've had a bit of a, bit of a lazy morning. But such a nice morning. So I've just got my sleeping bag here and there. Um, with washing, I'll use a, I don't know if it's a tip for you or not, that I have a bungee cord and it acts as a little towel rail or hanging wet washing or something like that as well. But sleeping bag's just over a, a branch. But yeah, it's quite a, quite a handy little thing that if you're looking for it. Hardware shops or something. Um, yeah. What a lovely morning. I'm just going to get some breakfast, tidy things away, and just have a nice relaxed day. There's no rush, there's no rush, no pressure. It's just a nice, enjoy this woodland. There was a Tony Owl last night screeching on him. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't surprised. But apart from that, so quiet. So quiet last night. And I don't know if that's a thing that when you fall asleep with a little background noise, as in, I don't know, I don't know, just some background noise like wind or something like that. Um, you, you're, you naturally fall asleep, but when there's nothing, total silence, your ears come focused, that it's too quiet. So then it becomes a wee bit unnatural, which is a, sounds a bit weird that you want peace and quiet to sleep, but naturally you want a noise to make you sleep. Um, so I, my ears were just focusing on listening and wanting to hear something because there was nothing. And I never heard a thing till like yawn time in the morning for uh, that Tony Owl. But yeah, a lovely, a lovely start to the morning. Um, just going to get the kettle on. Or the <laughs> kettle on. I've not got that luxury yet. Um, just going to boil some water for a cup of tea and get some breakfast. <sighs> So this will be my breakfast this morning. Freshly made cup of tea. Um, a drink and a banana as well. Also, these are the boiled eggs I done yesterday morning. So get them eaten today. The midges are coming out now, and they're becoming a little bit annoying. A bit of a random kind of breakfast this morning. But... It'll do me. So probably just another random little helpful tip, guys. Um, although that's me putting my tent away, everything else is sort of dry there. I did have a little bit of condensation on the outer fly sheet on the inside. So I've kind of used the bungee rope again and just hung it there. So if you take that down first, it's got enough to... I know there's no really much wind here, but the, the warmth in the air 
might just help soak that up while you're packing the rest of your stuff away. So I know it is weather dependent, so if it's raining it's a completely different story, but if you do that first and just hang it up somewhere um, and let it dry. So by the time you've put your your excess food away, your little bits of clothing and stuff like that, or whatever you got, and leave this to really the last kick to give it as much um, ventilation and time to dry as you can. It's just a little bit of condensation on that. It's just because it was such a still night last night and quite humid. So has to be expected from some sort of, at some point. And uh, there's nothing worse than putting a tent away when it's condensation and you've got to get going and hurry up. So sometimes technically it's worth hanging that up really first so it's got a little bit time to dry. Okay, okay. That's me all packed away. Leave no trace as we do. So, the distance I've come to well, yesterday was roughly from Inverness and as near as Drum the Drocket. So I think Drum the Drocket's just not far down the couple of miles, I think, possibly. Um, this place from here, from Inverness to Drum the Drocket is absolutely stunning. If you're coming up here, there are plenty of places to camp just off the paths. This is such a lovely area and these trees, this woodland is absolutely beautiful. It goes on for miles and miles. Such a lovely area. You best just not have a fire whatsoever and just enjoy the, the scenery and the quietness and the peace and everything. Anyway, on that note, um, that's me all packed up, ready to go. I'm just going to walk the bike back out here onto the track and trundle down onto the remaining track that I had and my goal is to head for Fort Augustus today. Uh, we'll just see how the scenery is and play it by ear and just see what happens at the time. This is a little adventure and it's discovering what the Great Glen Way actually is. It's a stunning walk and cycle and hopefully I'm bringing something to you <laughs> or you're taking something away from this little this little video whether you'd like to come here for a walk or a day or, or a weekend or something like that you know beautiful and hopefully we get to see more of Loch Ness for you <laughs> so okay this is day two so let's get going guys come on a delightful little cycle mostly pushing it to be honest I should say um because it's quite downhill a bit and with the weight of these bags on the back I'm just going to like cope it quite a lot so safety 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 uh, but what a lovely little woodland path um walking and cycling on it so it's just really good it's such a nice atmosphere cycling through that to be honest and here we are we come out to the beautiful Loch Ness and of course Urquhart Castle. Probably one of the most famous castles in the world or Scotland. Um, of course for Loch Ness Monster, if you if that's it. Uh, but yeah, she looks actually quite calm again, that water. A little bit of cloud clipping the tops of the hills there.
So after leaving that forestry and just catching a good glimpse of Urquhart Castle and Loch Ness views, Drum the Rockets just round the corner, not very far, but this is the first time since leaving Inverness that I've actually seen a main road. So it just shows you how good the Great Glen Way walk is, that you're not walking on that pretty busy road, to be honest. Um, I think that's the 882. And the path goes a bit, this is the path that's just hit the side of it now, so it'll take me into uh, Drum the Drocket and potentially I think I'll go away up and into the woods again. So technically you're not really even on the road, which is brilliant um, for obviously, obviously re obvious reasons like safety and you just want to be in the woods and peace and quiet. But this little track is going to take me into Drum the Drocket. So let's go and find a wee place for a coffee and a view. Okay, I just I've had my coffee and a sandwich just to tick things over before I have a late lunch or something later on. Um so that was Drum the Drocket. But a bustling little place. Obviously it's the it's the main route to go north from this side, so um yes, there's a it can be a busy a busy road. Uh the place where I stopped for a coffee was probably the first place to be honest at the just at the the nest centre. Um was quite pricey, so come a little bit further in, you're talking only five hundred yards more. Um, if you're coming from the sort of north side, um, there, there is, a, is a bustling little place, so there is plenty of places to eat and drink. Um, great little tourist information place if you're looking for information about walks and what to do and uh, whatever the information notice board. And as you see, the bike station, which is basically you can you can hire an an e-bike for the day or whatever but beside it there is a little tool station so you can do a bit of maintenance on your bike which is absolutely fantastic um, plenty of little tools, a pump and round the corner there's water as well, drinking water so pretty well self-sufficient if you're passing through here on a bike there is um, equipment and water supplies for you uh, I've come through and I've just taken a wee right and that's me heading along this track back onto the Great Glen Way. So, see what we can see, yeah? I know the done thing is to cycle through woodlands but just coming into that pine forest and just you can it's that sense of change where you now hit a it's like you've opened a door into another world because everything's so quiet still you have different birds you have a different feel, you have a different vibe. So when you come into a forest, a full of pine trees, it's not, it's not eerie, but it's very, completely different. And you notice it straight away. So it's actually quite nice just to push the bike through it and just get a good, nice, natural, peaceful feel in the air and as you go quietly just pushing the bike through you never know what you see and that's what this adventure is all about it's just seeing different things hearing different things it's just so lovely 
Let's see what we can see and hear. Now, I'm going to hazard a guess that was a cigarette or even a glass bottle that's been discarded at the side of a road and the heat has just magnified it. You can smell it, so it's actually just definitely not been that long. Which is pretty gutting and it could have been way worse than what it is. But not clever. I've just come through this, through a wee various crofts and farms. And I've come to the track where it splits and there's a... The Great Glen Way goes down the way or you can take the hill road. So I'll just show you. So there we go. This is what I mean. If you can follow that, there's various tracks that you can do depending on your ability and that kind of thing. So you can take the hill path, which is quite steep and away through the tops of the hills and through forests. Or you can take the sort of lower side, which is probably more suited for bikes and... Um, Especially with me with these bags on and all that, so it's probably a little bit easier. For whatever your ability, there we go. And at this point, there's a little clay works and pottery and tea room, so I might just see what's what. Intriguing. 200 yards. <laughs> Let's see. So just come down the path after leaving that little coffee shop and the pottery absolutely beautiful just so quaint I love it um, so yeah I've come down the path and I thought I'll shut this gate and I thought here we go hmm I think we may have a, an issue an issue here Yeah, it's not happening. Not happening. Probably about two miles, two and a half miles from Invermorrison at the moment. I'm coming down to sort of Loch Ness level, if you can see that, from a great height, a wee bit further down. So after leaving that wee single track, I've been hitting like forestry roads like this and they've been an absolute breeze, really, most of them. Um, apart from coming up some of the steep bits, this is the low road. The high road is a bit obviously not suitable for bikes, but if you're a, an extreme mountain biker, absolutely get yourself in there. 
Um, but with the back, the bike parks and everything, the low road is a lot easier. And yeah, this track, Forest Road, is really good to cycle on. So this should take me all the way into Invermorrison. It was nice in the forestry where it was a bit cooler. And yeah, it's very peaceful and midges are out in, <laughs> in force inside the forestry, but it's the way it is. What a glorious bike ride in this forest track. It's great. Now that's an ant's nest. What a feat of probably engineering for that, to build it like that. That's just incredible. So. There's one carrying something there. Nature is amazing. So this is a stone cave just off the track there. It's obviously been an overhanging rock and it's just been built with stone round it so it's a, a little shelter. But how actually brilliant is this? The stones that are around the wall are very neatly done and tightly packed and you also have a nice little seating area of a bit of a curve which is probably nice for walkers sheltering from the adverse weather and I tell you what if you were really desperate you could probably sleep in here of course you could you could, could sleep in here, what am I saying? I would Definitely, probably fit a couple of people in here. It's actually quite cool as well, so it's even a, a shelter from the sun, because it's keeping it cool, very cool. This is St Columba's Well. It is believed that the well has been here since early Pictish times. The water was considered to be poisonous and caused boils if it splashed on your skin. St Columba passed this way to visit Brood, the great king of the Picts. He blessed the well and drove all the evil spirits away, making the water pure and clean. Just taking a wee breather here. So I came through quite a bit of forestry back there. It was just like um, came off the the main sort of forest track road and took a a right away up into the hill a little bit through a winding track path again, just a an arrow thing, and basically came out on a forestry line. I don't know if you could see just a just a forestry line there. That brings you along a path into a very, very steep hill coming down. The full brake system was on all the time. Very steep. Um, to the little village of Invermorrison. 
I haven't stopped in there. There was a couple of pubs that I seen on the route. I'm just came through the the sort of um, the main bit of road. I turned it off again and back onto this little track here, and it really takes me along a little narrow track like this as well. I run in adjacent to this road. I could probably cycle along that road because the two of them are running parallel, but that'd be cheating, wouldn't it? I think from here. And uh, Fort Augustus is about five miles, which is probably going to be a long five miles with doing little tracks like this, unless it opens up onto another road at all. But the sun's still shining, positive, and absolutely beautiful scenery. Oh, it's nice to be in the shade a little bit because it's quite hot still. So we'll see what we see what's ahead. There we go, we can see Loch Ness a wee bit more now than stood us through the trees and a lot higher up so we've come down a bit on this low road forest track and uh, the mighty Loch Ness. Oh, goodness me, goodness me. Well, that was quite thrilling, actually. It's coming. You pedal up a little bit of a hill on the track and there's quite a good run all the way down. A couple of good few hundred yards and then you go up a little bit of a hill again and then down, so you are getting a bit of a, a break now and again. But I've just come into this wood here and the trees are absolutely huge they're amazing as straight as a die huge nature again what a beautiful forest and with all the smaller pine trees in between filling all the gaps with the sunlight yeah, it's just, just enormous it goes up and up, I can't even see the top goodness It's amazing. What a nice place to stop and actually admire the view. Okay folks. <laughs> right, okay, I've been to Fort Augustus. I pip popped in and got a fish supper. No, I didn't. I've got a chicken supper. Um, just because I was going to camp in a wood, I thought I'll get something hot in my stomach. Get something instead of faffing about cooking something at the moment um, I've got this I've got to this quiet wood um, about t 10 minutes walk, cycle out the back um, so I'm a bit off the Great Glen Way I need to cycle into back into Fort Augustus tomorrow morning to get back on the Great Glen Way so there's a lot of moving about anyway I'm in a wood and I'm getting the tent up it's just the midges are just coming out a bit more than I like so I'm just going to hurry up and get the tent up get what I need into the tent but from now, see you now, see you in a bit <laughs> I got the tent put up very quickly because the midges were becoming very annoying sorted inside with the sleeping bag and the air mat and settled down I checked my legs for ticks and found I did have a few on there so the night just disappeared, taking all these off, and settled down, only to be awakened in the middle of the night by something screeching. 